Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Everything Hurts and I'm Dying, the podcast with me, Julia Krause. And this week, I have the amazing Rita Holt. Thanks for having me, Julia. Rita, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Mm. So, um, basically, I'm a personal trainer and a nutritionist, and um, I feel like these two complement each other quite well, but um, it's um, still a bit rare in the industry for someone to be uh, both, because obviously, as a trainer, you know it as well, we do get some basic qualifications um, in nutrition as well, and then obviously we can just learn as much as we want uh, just on our own but to like get fully uh, certified is um, is quite rare and just to make sure that you know what you're actually doing with your clients <laughs> yeah so there is a difference so for our audience there is a difference between being a personal trainer and being a certified nutritionist and Rita is both and being both at the same time is actually few and far between for example I'm not a certified nutritionist and most personal trainers aren't so I'm really happy to have you here today. I'm really excited. This episode is going to be a lot about nutrition-based things. Um, we have a lot of amazing questions from the audience and a lot of fun games. And I really hope that you guys are able to get a lot out of this episode because Rita is absolutely brilliant. And I'm really excited to pick her brain for the next uh, hour mm -hmm. <laughs> in this room. Um, so Rita, first and foremost, uh, how's your week going? Like, how are you? <laughs> so um, I just like popped out from my training session <laughs> to record this podcast. I'm like halfway through my training. Um, I can't say I was thoroughly enjoying <laughs> today's session. I'm a bit sore, I'm a bit <laughs> upset, but yeah, <laughs> things need to get done, so I'm gonna do them. Why so, are you upset? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, it's just <laughs> kind of a new um, training block for me, so I'm just working on some uh, new uh, stuff now um, I kind of go through phases so I always pick something that I would like to improve and then I just uh, work my butt off quite literally so um, back then it was like pull-ups or hip thrusts and then night squats so I'm working towards like a really heavy squat now for me so um, yeah I just got some uh, additional work that I need to get done and it was uh, not as much fun as I hoped it would be. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. But you do a lot of your own programming, no? Yeah, so um, um, basically I've been um, quite busy with work for the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it was really important that I can just fit my sessions in as and when. And if I can't fit in like a full training program, I didn't want to stress myself out. Yeah. And I... Um, I wasn't actually working towards any specific goals. I was doing it um, more for fun and just for like general fitness and just to improve like marginally. And I felt like if I'm in control of my own training, then obviously I won't let anyone down and yeah, yeah. I can still do my best. And if on a certain day I feel like I can't be bothered to do my usual plans, then I will just do something that makes me feel good and just move around some things always better than nothing yes, and uh, that. that just um, took that sort of pressure away but now I feel like I have a bit more time to actually concentrate on um, some goals of mm -hmm. mine mm -hmm. uh, so I'm trying to prioritize that so now I'm uh, trying to work on um, my squat so having going for basically what is what is your current goal so just going for a heavy one rep max for squat or I, yeah, I guess, um, so most of the time, I guess I kind of follow more like um, a bodybuilding style um, program. So I split my workouts up to like upper and lower body. Mm -hmm. I make sure to train um, uh, four times a week and then anything on top of that, which would be like a, um, cardio or heat, uh, would be just additional. Uh, so just the basic resistance training sessions would be split to uh, lower upper rest lower upper rest nice. uh, or the uh, cardio stuff um yeah but now i'm just trying to structure it a bit more um just in a, in a more uh, how do you say clever like more structured yeah more structured yeah programming way. kind of i'm trying to structure it a bit better <laughs> I, I like that and so i really like that because they're as as personal trainers and you know we train all the time and it does fluctuate throughout the years. You know, you can go from having it be strictly regimented and, you know, planned mm -hmm. and structured as you will mm -hmm. to having it be a bit more loose and fluid. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of, training has to just sort of follow the patterns of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you were saying that you were working a lot previously. Mm -hmm. And so the training had to be a bit more fluid. Exactly. And I feel like that is just a, 
just a really good thing for like our audience as well to remember that you are in charge and you get to decide what you want to do nothing is forced on you if you want to change your goals halfway through a training program because you don't enjoy it or you just don't like anything that you're doing and it makes you miserable and you don't want to turn up to the gym there's no point uh, trying to push through that because no one's forcing you you're yeah. doing it to, uh, to yourself so mm-hmm. just change it up just have a thing um reprioritize uh, what you what you want to do and then go for that i love that so that's you know that's one of the taglines in my business is health and fitness doesn't have to be miserable you're allowed to enjoy yourself and i think that kind of what you've just said really resonates well with that because It doesn't have to be miserable. It doesn't have to be like you have to do this. We're all adults. You know, we're all big boys and girls. And there is, I always say there's more than one way to skin a cat. Mm. Like there's multiple ways that you can achieve your health and fitness goals in on different pathways and in different ways and i feel like for us um specifically because obviously we work in a private gym Mm -hmm. so we spend a lot of time with each other Mm -hmm. and uh, the rest of the coaches it's lovely to be able to bounce off ideas and just uh, discuss our training with each other so we kind of help each other out in our like um, specific areas so um, for example i'm getting a little help uh, from one of the coaches and i'm trying to uh, help him um, with nutrition in return Turn. and it just seems to be just a good trade-off for, for all of us because we just both get become better um, at what we do and uh, just get better at our like personal goals as well. I love that. One thing that we have in this podcast is the concept of find your why. Mm. So sort of the why you are on this journey of health and fitness, like mm. what's kind of the key motivator for you? Mm-hmm. So for example, my why is that why I pursue health and fitness in the first place mm-hmm. is that I never want my body to be a limitation mm-hmm. for the things that I want to do in my life. Mm-hmm. So if I want to go for a hike with my family, I can go for a hike with my family. If mm-hmm. I want to be strong enough to pick up the couch or sofa or whatever, Dan and I have already argued about if it's a couch or a sofa. <laughs> if I need to pick something up, I am strong enough to pick up something. Mm-hmm. What is your personal why for this path of health, health and fitness that you're on? Mm-hmm. I guess it might be very generic but this is just something that makes me happy i just love doing it and it just feels like you know when you have like a a busy life and you can't really spend that much time like um doing the things that you like because you work a lot or you just have like a busy family life it's so nice to have that little chunk of the day when you can just put your headphones on and just concentrate on yourself and no one can take that away from you and um for me that has always been a priority and it's kind of what I base my business around um, my business is called prioritize you and I always say to my clients that I think it's important that we all prioritize ourselves and our goals because no one will do that for us and we can't just keep putting everyone else first we have to put ourselves first first um, on certain occasions because that's for our sanity that's for our mental health that's for our happiness and for me that's literally it I'm also a little competitive so if I see something that I would love to be able to do I will work until I can do it and I have things that I've worked really hard for and some of them took years uh, like the pull-ups or yeah. the pistol squat or like these sort of things and I'm sure um, getting to like a really heavy squat um, they'll take a little while but I'm not in a rush I have the time and I love the grind so I'm really looking forward to turning up to the gym every day and just do it the same thing all over again if I have to. Or if I don't feel like it, I just change it up for the day and then I get back to it when I'm ready. Yeah, I love that. Also, Rita doing pull-ups is amazing. <laughs> every time you do pull-ups in the gym, I literally stop and I just watch you and I stare at you. I'm such a creep. I'm like, look at her go. She's so cool. And I just there, like the heart eye emoji. That's basically me watching you do pull-ups. So I have never noticed that because I'm dying. <laughs> just trying to just get up to the, <laughs> just above the bar. But <laughs> thanks, Julia. I got you. I got you. Um, and so I loved what you just said about, um, obviously your business called prioritize you and about it being a time to prioritize yourself and kind of filling up your cup. So there's the Mm -hmm. concept of, uh, I, I love this concept about filling up your cup and, you have a cup and then you pour into other people's cups, Mm. but you can't fill up other people's cups if your cup is empty. Exactly. Yeah. So the concept of you can't pour from an empty cup. Mm. So, you know, what I'm hearing from you is that sort of this time of exercise is the way that you fill up your cup. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously 
nutrition just sort of came as um, on the back of uh, that whole thing um, because that was just something that I kept like researching loads and then it just um, seemed like something um, that I can turn into like um, a second profession I guess yeah <laughs> Nice. Well, a second profession, honestly, you're killing it, to be honest. I, I love learning about the nutrition stuff through you, and I think you're absolutely brilliant at it. Oh, I'm excited to get more into it. Everything hurts and I'm dying. <laughs> Alrighty, everybody. So before we get to the real stuff, uh, Reed and I are going to play a little game. And it's going to be super fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm not super nervous or anything. <laughs> <laughs> the game is called This or That. Yep. And so you have, I'm going to give you two options and you have mm -hmm. to pick one. And the worst part about it is that you can't explain yourself. Yeah, this makes it really frustrated. <laughs> I, I would just love to know the explanations behind like everything. So yeah, this will be fun this for is you. <laughs> just peak anxiety. I, you know what? I think that we're just going to keep this as a thing with everybody that comes in. I'm just going to make slightly uncomfortable. In yeah, some great. Way. So this <laughs> is doing great. Yeah, yeah thanks. Perfect. This is your time. <laughs> Working. Thanks, thanks <laughs> okay, I promise to take it easy on you at first. Okay? okay, so you have to pick one or the other. Okay, are you ready? I think so. Are you emotionally prepared? Uh, I don't think I will ever be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pasta or rice? Rice. Okay, bread or potatoes? Bread. Tattoos or no tattoos? Mm. Tattoos. <laughs> okay, uh, CrossFit or F45? F45. There it is. Good. Um, purple or pink? <laughs> purple. Okay. Spain or France? Spain. Wood or steel? <laughs> wood or steel? <laughs> Let's go with wood. <laughs> um, oats or cereal? None. None? You can't mm. you have, pick. You okay, have cereal. Okay. Um, Red Bull or Monster? None. <laughs> Lucozade. <laughs> I hear that. Um, I'll give that one to you because they're bullshit. Uh, squats or deadlifts? Oh, I would say squats because that's what I'm working <laughs> on. But Fair enough. Who doesn't love a good Romanian deadlift? Cheese or cheese? Um, ooh, that's a very tough one, Julia. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready to answer that. I will have to go with cheese. Oh, man. Plot okay. Twist. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. Last one. Chicken or beef? Chicken. Okay. Actually, I've got some more. Um, elephants or giraffes? Giraffes. Okay. Uh, and then last one, beach holiday or city holiday? Beach. Beach. Right, <laughs> that doesn't mean what, what did you call me? <laughs> You're a beach holiday, <laughs> Julia. <laughs> All right. That's it from my end. Do you have any from your end? Okay. I actually have some similar ones. Okay. So, okay. meat or fish? Uh, meat. Carbs or fat? Oh, uh, carbs, definitely. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> Upper or lower? Upper all day. Fun fact about me is I actually hate training legs. <laughs> I'd rather train upper body all day. I hate leg day. Yeah, it's a good thing that there's like no lower body stuff in Olympic lifting at all. <laughs> How's that going, by the way? <laughs> this is my whole life in a nutshell. Truth or dare? Dare. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think so. Sure. Sweet or savory? Savory all day, baby. Yeah, I knew that. Hot or cold? Cold. <laughs> okay. All right. Last one. Butter boobs? Ooh, um, boobs. Everybody likes boobs. Boobs are like universally, like everybody likes boobs. Yeah. I feel. I'm a butt person myself. I hear that. You're very, it's, you're very in right now. <laughs> I feel like everyone's a butt person now. It's 2022. You know, Kim yeah. Kardashian reigns supreme. Yeah. Everyone likes butts, but... Yeah. Maybe just because my boobs are better than my butt. That's, Maybe a, that's, that's exactly my reasoning as well. <laughs> like obviously, like mm, or yeah. You do have a very lovely butt. I will say. <laughs> well, I can work on my butt. I can't really work on my boobs. So. Just focus really hard. <laughs> I could get work done on my boobs. But it's not really the same, is it? <laughs> just bench press a shit ton and just yeah. really. Like, <laughs> then I just hope don't have best. any boobs left. <laughs> it's so funny. I've seen like a lot of like the CrossFit girls. Um, so one of my best friends is is said CrossFit girl. And they're, like, notorious for having, like, really nice butts, but mm -hmm. also, like, not yeah. as big boobs just because of, like... Gets in the way. <laughs> well, and, and they're in really good shape. And obviously, like, boobs are, like, kind of bigger parts of your body. And when you're training to that capacity, you sort of lose 
body weight and Mm -mm. your boobs are part of the body weight sections that get lost and so always the first part that goes as well is it yeah in my experience (laughs) and so she is a sports bra that just says i have no boobs (laughs) and she just wears it all the time i'm just like nope my boobs are gone the end sorry at least my butt is good though so you have an amazing butt and i look at it all the time it's lovely thank you (laughs) everything hurts and i'm dying Okay, everybody, welcome back. We are going to move on to our next segment called Gym Beef, mm. a.k.a. Beefcake, baby. Mm. So, Rita, do you have a Gym Beef or Beefcake for us today? Okay, so I have two. I love it. Well, yeah. One of them is a bit more, like, gym than, and the other one is a bit more, like, nutrition-y. Mm. But uh, both of them relate to, like, both of our lives, like, uh, lives I guess, um, really well. So I started the more serious one, I guess, because... Yeah, that's what you're here for to talk about nutrition. And it doesn't have to be, we don't have to be serious. We'll leave the, we'll leave the, we'll leave the uh, petty one <laughs> uh, last. Yeah, oh, everyone will agree, I think, uh, with the petty one. But my first piece of gym beef would be very restrictive nutrition plans or meal plans provided by personal trainers. Yes. Um, so I'm not sure if, um, like, our audience is aware, but um, for like us to be able to provide meal plans, we have to be um, insured. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, like things can go wrong. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it does seem quite easy to tell someone that, oh, these are your macros, I like this is what you should eat, this much um, uh, protein, this many uh, carbs, uh, this many fats, and then this is your like um, uh, calorie target, mm-hmm. and then provide some options that would cover that. But that doesn't mean that... Um, we have thought about like everything that needs to be thought of like uh, um, macronutrients mm-hmm. as well as macronutrients um, so obviously we can um, it's, it's a very um, serious thing to take some nutrition into our hands and uh, provide them a, a prescription basically for what they have to eat day in day out and um, on like a side note Obviously, we have talked about how, like, most uh, personal trainers are not actually um, very um, uh, qualified in nutrition. Yeah. So it is not really something that um, they know that much about. Mm-hmm. But even if they do, if a client ends up um, with an eating disorder or any, like, sort of deficiencies, yeah. uh, they are not insured to actually um, save themselves in court if they if uh, if um, um, things come to the worst um so i think it's a very big responsibility and we shouldn't uh, take it lightly um but more importantly i think there's no need to be restrictive in our diet i uh, i'm all for flexible dieting approaches and i think um telling someone what to eat for every single meal of the day is very um restrictive and then it can encourage very rigid um um uh, ways of thinking mm-hmm. and just very black and white thinking yeah and then if the person thinks that oh i can only do well if i'm on this meal plan yes. then they won't have um that sort of um personal um responsibility or they won't feel like they are personally responsible for their choices and that they can do it on their own as well yeah. and um i feel like it's kind of the thing of like um teach um the man how to um, fish, fish mm-hmm. um because i don't honestly i don't want my clients to be with me forever like my nutrition clients i want them to learn as much as they can from me and work with me until they can do it on their own and make their own decisions and i don't want anyone to text me when they are in a restaurant asking me which item can i have off of this menu because i have no idea because i was following that meal plan for so long that i can't even think for myself if the chicken in the restaurant is the same as the chicken with my broccoli that i always have at home So for me, that is just a one big thing. And um, just from like um, an evidence-based um, um, perspective, it has been shown that rigid approaches are not as successful as flexible approaches mm-hmm. because they are very restrictive and they um, don't um, help with adherence. So it's more likely that someone um, falls off the, <laughs> the, the wagon um, because they have a wagon. Yeah, yeah. We just have... A diet really and our diet is what we make of it and then it can be more nutritious it can be more calorie dense or it can uh, support our goals or it can be the opposite mm-hmm. but it isn't um, dependent on like a very um, a strict plan 
Yeah, so that actually, that reflects well. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about my pillars of learning with my training philosophy Mm. that I use with my personal life and also with my T-Rex athletes. Mm -hmm. And one of those pillars is that diets don't work, Mm -hmm. right? Because going on a diet, going off of a diet, what, what, so going on a diet just implies that it's going to be something to go on or off of. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about kind of wanting to establish a positive relationship with food Mm -hmm. with your clients. Mm -hmm. So that they can make their own decisions and sort of figure out how they want to eat in Mm -hmm. their day-to-day life. Yeah. What's your opinion on diets? So I think um, I did listen to that podcast and I am familiar uh, with like your way of thinking about it. And um, although like um, I mostly agree uh, with where you're coming from, Mm -hmm. I uh, usually phrase it slightly differently. So when I'm thinking about diet, I don't think about uh, necessarily fat diets or just like um, a temporary diet. I think Mm -hmm. about our everyday diet what we eat on an everyday basis so i like to encourage everyone to think about their diet as their nutrition rather than a diet Um, because then in that way it is not something that is just necessarily like something that you do for a couple of weeks or months uh, but you're going to do that forever because it doesn't matter if you're like on a diet or off a diet you are going to eat every single day Mm -hmm. and you're probably going to um eat several times in a day unless you're following some um, special protocols Uh, so why not make the most of every decision that we make Um, on the other hand though I do feel like diets work as long as people can adhere to them so this is where um, I know this is kind of your understanding as well but this is what I usually um, um, like to specify that if someone can stick to a chosen dietary method they are going to be successful mm-hmm. as long as they can um, adhere to it, like yeah, basically what yeah. I uh, said. So uh, the m- biggest problem is that uh, people think they should be doing a certain diet, which doesn't really suit their own lifestyle. So um, in my practice, usually I do not uh, put anyone on like a certain diet like keto or um Uh, low carb or high fat or vegan or uh, Mm -hmm. paleo or anything like that Uh, I tell them the principles uh, and we discuss how they can work um, their own like um, prepare their own diet based on those principles and some days that means they are keto for the day like Mm -hmm. obviously not to the level of like the ketones being produced in their urine for example but they might go very high fat and very low carb for the day because that suits them on that day Mm -hmm. and then on other days they might go very high fat they are not necessarily cutting in alcohol they might just be choosing to save up alcohol for the weekends Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of uh, dietary flexibility in that but they are um, many of my clients want to lose weight and they can can lose weight and many of them have been successful uh, previously with um, like keto as well for example because they could adhere to it because it did suit them at that point in their life mm-hmm. so um, I think um, what's more important is to understand that it doesn't have to be a single protocol and it will always lead to weight loss as long as it creates a calorie deficit and it doesn't really matter how it creates a calorie deficit Mm -hmm. or if the uh, goal is slightly different, like obviously um, uh, performance-based or uh, muscle gain or just body recomposition-based, then we have to understand what the underlying principles are and then we can choose from several methods and uh, we can change up those methods every single day or every single meal if we want uh, to suit us as best as they can. Awesome. So what you're saying is that it's it's not a one size fits all solution. Mm-hmm. Keto diet is not the solution. Paleo is not the solution. Vegan is not the solution. The solution is whatever diet like you can stick with consistently and sustainably exactly. for long periods of time that are suited to each individual and their needs. And I think there, uh, there's, this is the main reason why there are so many arguments because some people do really well on yes. keto and it's amazing for them and I would never uh, tell a client who comes to me and tells me that oh, most of the time I do really well if I go low carb not to lo- go low carb yeah. because it's not going to be my first um, um, uh, like um, um, method to uh, suggest that oh okay we are going to change the top because science suggests that you don't have to go no if it works for them perfect yeah. why 
might change that. We are always going to go for the um, smallest possible changes that will make the biggest difference in their circumstances. So that's why um, my approach is um, a lot more like personalized. I don't really like to um, give out very generic advice. Obviously, there is um, uh, advice that we can uh, talk about that would suit most people. But mm -hmm. when I'm working uh, with clients uh, one to one, it's always a hundred percent based on their lifestyle and. I get to know them really well because it's important so that I can actually change their, help them change their diet mm -hmm. instead of giving them a whole new diet. Yeah. And this goes back to what you were saying about the, your, the beefcake was basically, it's not a one size fits all solution and mm -hmm. having that like planned program of every single meal mm -hmm. and every single thing that yeah. they need to eat like isn't necessarily the way to not, go and it's not uh, really probably um, um necessary for most people obviously there are certain populations who mm -hmm. might benefit from that um like recovering from eating disorders it can yeah. be very important to structure that but obviously uh, only a dietitian can work with those populations so it is very uh, much outside of our scope of practice so this just kind of relates to um my uh, gym or beefcake uh, <laughs> that i don't really feel like anyone of us including myself as a nutritionist should take on clients who have like clearly been struggling with their eating because we can't help them their money is better spent elsewhere because they need a different sort of approach because it's not just about macros and um, uh, carbs and protein and mm -hmm. food choices it's so much more than that it's about how they think about food how they feel about food how they feel about themselves and what else is going on in their lives yes, so we yes. can't take it lightly because we have a massive responsibility um, mm -hmm. as uh, the entire fitness industry. So I do feel really strongly <laughs> about this. And I, um, I, see that I see the change in the industry. I think we are going in the right direction. Um, I see that um, a lot more people are promoting flexible approaches. They are pro uh, mm -hmm. promoting... Uh, uh, just this sort of um, separation from thinking that any certain food could be good or bad or has an emotional value and uh, just telling people that they shouldn't eat something um, because it's not going to um, they are not going to be able to reach their goals because funny enough there have been um, um, studies where people only eat like uh, sugary stuff and they still lost oh, weight yeah, yeah. so it's just not really about that obviously that's not what I'm going to suggest someone that uh, only ate um, there was this Twinkie diet for example um, mm -hmm. only ate Twinkies but if they are um, having anything sugary every now and then it's not going to hinder their fat loss if they are having alcohol every now and then it's not going to be the end of the world it's yeah. more about the big picture and just the uh, accumulation of of, um, uh, those meals over the uh, over a period of time. Nice, nice. I I think that that's something to be reiterated for the audience. So guys, like as personal trainers, we are actually unless you have a specific certification, you are actually not qualified to provide meal plans for your clients. And so something that is a red flag for me that I see a lot is when personal trainers do specific meal plans for their clients. That's actually illegal. Um, they're not qualified to do it. They're not, in, as Rita was saying, they're not insured to do it either. And basically they do not have enough information about their client to be able to make a meal program having specific things that they need to eat because they don't know you know, their vitamin A levels. They don't no, know. No, how would they? But even if they get a, a blood test done, we are not medical uh, medical um, uh, professionals. Mm -hmm. We are not qualified to read and um, and understand those um, results uh, to a level where we can make uh, proper um, uh, suggestions. But more importantly, I do not feel the need to provide meal plans, Love especially when that. they are restricted. Good. In my practice, I might provide samples of what I suggest a, um, a decent meal might look like mm -hmm. in their a particular circumstance based on their uh, preferences but I would always emphasize that these are just suggestions make them your own don't eat the same thing every day and let's have a chat about what you think would be a good alternative y you should come up with some ideas so it's very much like bouncing the idea ideas back um, uh, and forth just so that the diet is really theirs mm -hmm. I'm just helping with the starting point and then we are um, uh, giving um, my clients the autonomy to eventually come up with their uh, diet 
on the go because it will change our yeah. goals change of our our, our bodies change and that's absolutely fine so we might want to concentrate on something else in a couple of months time so that uh, if we learn the basics we will know exactly what we need to change in our diet to do that nice i love that well mm. done well said everything hurts and i'm dying <laughs> so rita Earlier, you mentioned that you had a slightly petty. Okay. Cake, yes. Okay. Just and I'm here for the pettiness. <laughs> okay. Let's get it over with. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any female on this planet who would disagree with this, but like, why can't they sew the pads into the sports bras? Yes. Like the amount of loose pads I have after every load of laundry and then you have to like match it up they always fold in half you yes. always have like a crease on every piece of um, sports bra or like obviously it's not just sports bras but like sports tops as well they have that padding like why can't you be better Sell like them in. it just <laughs> no it just annoys me to no extent like we got to the point where if we put in a load of laundry, like my husband would um, uh, put them out to dry, but he would leave all my sports bras and I would have to go through them one by one because he refuses to um, like figure out how uh, they fall. So even yeah. if I'm not home, I will just <laughs> go home and just like uh, rewash them so that I can just... Uh, uh, no, sew them it's... in. Commit. Make the commitment. Commit. Yeah. Sew them in. Make our Why lives easier. So hard? I feel like this has been going on for years and years and I know for sure I'm not the only person who has ever mentioned it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Please. As so like <laughs> all females, please do. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So I'm here. I'm here for that 100%. Commit. Sew them in. You clothes making bastards. Sew it in. Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Done. Everything hurts and I'm dying. <laughs> So, Rita, we have a few questions from the audience here, mm -hmm. and I'm excited for mm -hmm. us to really just jump right in and ask them. So, um, one of them is, <laughs> what's your favorite blondie flavor? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is like um, a flavor that has not been uh, like actually uh, tested yet, but I stand by it. I'm 100% sure that it will be amazing, and it would be maple bacon Blondie. maple bacon maple blondies. bacon because i think just a combination of sweet and savory yeah is just fair. gonna be amazing so um, we are not looking at anyone in like particular but <laughs> if someone could make that happen uh in the near future i wouldn't be mad and i would be happy to uh just uh, confirm um if my suggestion um uh, or if my um uh, expectation was like um, achieved yeah, yeah exactly so for everybody listening at home, Tony, our wonderful editor, <laughs> is the king of making blondies. He makes them all the time for us at the gym, and we just love them, and they're so good. And there's been so many good flavors, and so my favorite flavor so mm, far mm. has been the blueberry one. And, like, blueberry, like, jammy dodger flavor. Mm. It's it's just incredible. And he <laughs> makes them, and everyone in the gym just basically loses <laughs> their mind about it. Because we're, we're a very food-positive gym. Yep. And I really rate that about us. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, if anybody's ever Definitely. struggling, everybody's like, have you eaten? Have you, when's the yeah. last time you've eaten? Do you need food? Have you eaten? I think I think the most common question that I ask my clients, so what are you having for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> also, Rita's phone background is like different like food things on like Instagram or yep. whatever. It's literally just, yeah, pictures yeah, of who, food. Who doesn't like food? Like... I don't trust that person. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hear that. Okay, I, that. I have a question for you, Julia. Oh, okay, okay. I'm so, um, what would be your favorite, like, healthy meal option? If you oh. would choose something that you think is healthy, what would it be? So, I think that I... So, if I was to make, like, a perfect healthy meal, I, I would always just try to include all three macros mm -hmm. in some fashion. So some fats, some protein, and some carbs. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also would try to include like some fruits or vegetables or some mm -hmm. sort of like fiber or something, yeah. something. Hashtag eat your veggies. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the basic structure. And a lot of the times if I'm like busy or struggling to like put something together, I'll just try to hit all three macros with some sort of vegetable and, and call it a day. Mm -hmm. So I like to have nice big breakfast. I guess mm -hmm. I'll just use my breakfast as an example. Um, nice big breakfasts to set me off for the day and it's usually like eggs, mm -hmm. cheese, spinach and then 
I'm from New Mexico, so honestly, it's usually in a tortilla or like tacos <laughs> or like ninety percent of the food I eat is <laughs> either in taco or burrito <laughs> form. So it's usually like wrapped up in a tortilla or something, and I just call it a day with that. So we got mm-hmm. the, the you know the protein from the eggs and the cheese, fats mm-hmm. from the cheese, mm-hmm. spinach as a veggie, and wrap yeah. it up in a tortilla. Call it a day. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it just um I think it's important for like our audience as well to remember that especially because um we are both uh, personal trainers so uh, most people that we know um are into fitness and just mm-hmm. training we have to fuel for our workouts mm-hmm. we have to make sure that we eat enough so that we can perform well in the gym mm-hmm. we can't just starve ourselves and then expect good results it's not how it works we can starve ourselves and lose um weight but if we want to actually do well with our workouts and um keep progressing and reach our goals we have to fuel for those workouts and there's uh, several considerations but just making sure that we meet our energy requirements is a very very basic one of those yeah and we and we are so and we're running around all day mm-hmm. and as Rita was talking about earlier about having your diet sort of be suitable to each individual and their lifestyle mm-hmm. so for me and my lifestyle I have a nice a huge breakfast mm-hmm. but then we're sort of like running around all mm-hmm. day we're training ourselves mm-hmm. we're training other people so I don't necessarily eat like a big lunch I kind mm-hmm. of like snack sporadically yeah. because I don't want to eat too much before training or too much after training and so I kind of just pick a little bit <laughs> and that's a very uh, interesting and that's where the individual like, aspect uh, comes in that um julia mostly comes in to um uh, train her clients like in the afternoon or like mm-hmm. after uh, lunchtime but I'm usually in the gym from like 6, 7 in the morning yeah. I can't eat in the morning at like 5 a.m. when I get off so I'm not um, I usually don't have breakfast unless it's the weekend and I have a little lane so for me for example lunch and dinner would be um, much bigger meals because I uh, have to structure it around my lifestyle and if I um, got really hung up around like oh I should eat breakfast because um, everyone should eat back home, breakfast right yeah. like uh, breakfast is the most oh, important meal. Like, uh, this is, yeah, this is, um, sometimes, um, uh, when we talk about, like, um, nutrition myth, that is, like, uh, oh, yeah. one of the, like, uh, the best ones, uh, mm. to debunk, because it won't matter as long as you are in control of your entire diet, it doesn't matter if you eat breakfast or not, if you do better because you ate breakfast, do it, if you have to pick up yeah, a croissant because that's the only thing that you can have because you don't have time to make a, a proper breakfast in the yeah. morning. You might spend those calories elsewhere and yeah. have a more nutritious meal a little later in the day and there's no issues with that. Yeah, so so exactly. And it has to go with your day and your lifestyle and what's most suitable for you. Exactly. Absolutely love that. Awesome. Yeah. So I've got another question for you, Rita. Mm. Um, it is, can I have a protein shake if I haven't trained that day? Okay, so I um I really like uh, this question because it um I can um give it uh like two um answers from like different approaches. Uh, the first answer is that yes, uh, you can have a protein shake, but also that you don't have to have a protein shake even if you train that day because I think something that um. Um, some people don't really understand this, uh, that protein shakes aren't magic. They yeah, are yes. just a convenient source of um, uh, increasing our protein intake. And as the uh, as it's obviously something that we can spend extra money on, I think they have been advertised as something that is just uh, uh, magical and they the will fix all your uh, problems. And um, I'm not going to lie, I drink protein shakes all the time because I'm very busy, I like the flavor of them and they are a very convenient way. Mm-hmm. The absorption is good, uh, you can get it in as many flavors as you want, it's quite satiating, uh, you feel like you're drinking a dessert, so there's lots of uh, advantages, mm-hmm. but no one has to drink protein shakes to match uh, or to reach their goals because it is just a protein source as chicken or tuna or eggs so if you can get your um, su- a sufficient amount of protein from whole foods then you can um, skip having protein shakes altogether it's just difficult and I find that uh, protein shakes are usually a bit um, of like a cheaper option <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. both in terms of um, uh, money but also in terms of like the um, uh, time that you have to spend preparing your yeah, meals you get a lot um, of bang for your buck exactly so i think um 
if someone doesn't like the flavor or if you haven't found one that uh, you really enjoy and you uh, really like eating lots of eggs, chicken and uh, whatever other, um, maybe even um, vegan or vegetarian um, mm -hmm. um, uh, protein sources, then by all means uh, have all your protein from those. It is just a little more uh, difficult uh, if your protein requirements are quite high. Yeah. So to put it into perspective, so Rita has mm -hmm. a lot of protein shakes because of the time and mm -hmm. she likes the taste, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I actually hardly ever drink mm -hmm. protein shakes because I, I just prefer to eat food mm -hmm. to get that source from food. So I do get a ton of protein in my diet mm -hmm. from, from actual food, you know, chicken and beef and mm -hmm. beans and all kinds of yeah. stuff as well. So it, it's different strokes for different folks. Yeah, and I think exactly. that people need to understand that protein shakes are not the be all end all solution to being fit <laughs> yeah it just really just something again that is a method but the underlying principle is just to hit your protein targets in some sort of way and yes if the protein shake helps with that because it's more uh, convenient or easier for you to measure out mm -hmm. uh, how much you want to have or you just can't like literally stomach that much of uh, the other sources then then go for it but you are not missing out on uh, gains if you don't perfect love that well said mm -hmm. Okay, if you could have only one protein source until the end of your life, what would that be? You know, that's a good question. I actually think that it would be eggs mm. because I do have eggs a lot. Again, I have I have big breakfasts and I have eggs a lot for breakfast. And so I do feel like it would probably be eggs. Also, mm. the versatility of eggs I like. Mm. So you can have them fried, scrambled, True. egg salad, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So what about you? Which one would you choose? I think I would go for salmon. Oh yeah, I love it. I mean, I I agree uh, wholeheartedly with uh, with eggs, but if I could only choose one, probably I would go for salmon. Smoked salmon? No, no, just, just like a, proper. yeah. Pepper. Salmon with teriyaki sauce is like my my go to way of preparing it. That is so good. Mm. I do love a good like teriyaki salmon. Mm. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> strong. All right, babe. Um. Let's talk about uh, training and nutrition considerations around our period. So, okay, uh, so uh, that is something that I talk a little um, about on uh, like my Instagram uh, as well because I think it is um, luckily not as much as it has been, but it's still kind of a taboo uh, subject mm -hmm. uh, in um, uh, for some people. I think. Uh, more and more male trainers are uh, much better clued upon the topic than they yes. used to be, and yes. I, I'm all for it. I think, um, I know some people say that, oh, they shouldn't talk about periods because they don't have periods. I disagree with that. If uh, a male trainer, if you have a trainer, uh, and it's not us, um, and they know how to um, uh, periodize your training or intuition around your cycle you are uh, probably uh, you have probably chosen a um, really good trainer because that is just something that they spend extra time figuring out and just making sure that they um, that, that they can help you as much as they possibly can to make sure that again uh, they are uh, putting together your uh, training and nutrition program based on your personal requirements yes um, because there are some requirements and they are very um, individual mm -hmm. uh, so even though there are certain uh, like um, um, underlying factors that are usually similar for most females just because of the hormonal uh, fluctuations mm -hmm. for example that are based on metabolic rate uh, increases slightly um, before our periods start so that uh, might mean that we require more uh, energy uh, in uh, those days thus uh, PMS cravings for example mm -hmm. Uh, it's uh, not necessarily the same for everyone or not necessarily uh, it is necessarily happening to the same level uh, to everyone and I think it's really important for uh, us girls to figure out how our cycle works and when we feel stronger when we feel weaker when we feel hungrier yes. because that is a, such a powerful tool uh, for us to help um, uh, figure out our nutrition and our training like I know for example, that if I'm uh, trying to um, um, lose a little bit of uh, body fat, I can't, for the life of me, diet around my period mm -hmm. because I'm just starving, hungry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I usually go into a slightly more aggressive deficit for the first two weeks of uh, my cycle and then I would just uh, go to maintenance for the second two weeks and happy days. I yeah. can have my chocolate and whatever else I crave obviously to a certain extent uh, we just have to make sure that we match our desires and 
also our goals if we um, want to reach any sort of uh, like um, um, calorie deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, but the calorie deficit is created over the course of the month rather than on an every single day. Sorry, can you say that one more time? Calorie <laughs> deficit is what? One more time? So the, you can create the calorie deficit over a certain period of time, which can be a week or a month or a day rather than in every single uh, meal or every single day. Yes, very good. Mm. Thank you for reiterating that. <laughs> no I think worries. that one's important because a lot of people can I get a bit carried well. away on the day-to-day -day basis yes, exactly. and they can get sort of lost in it. And it is important for you guys to think about it as a bigger picture, mm. you know, in, in, on a monthly basis mm. or a weekly basis. Yeah, or whatever really works for you. And this just really gives you, um, again, the tools to periodize around uh, your holiday or social occasions yes. and like if you know that you're always going out in the weekends maybe you can be a little um, more careful throughout the week and then you can um, have those extra calories in the bank for a Friday night out with um, with your partner or your family or your friends and this is just again uh, that knowledge is really power and you do get to make your own decisions if you know why you need to make those decisions no one is forcing it uh, on you you are making those choices so you feel like you are in charge which you should be if you don't feel like you're in charge of your nutrition in any uh, way shape or form i encourage you to to uh, learn a bit more about it or mm -hmm. just ask questions like we are both um uh, happy to um, answer questions um on our instagrams for example so just feel free to <laughs> let us know if you have anything that you're unsure about it is just a uh, something that we are so like um uh enthusiastic about like i could talk about nutrition all day and <laughs> we are running really short on time or probably we are out of time because we could probably sit here for another couple of hours and just uh keep answering questions or just to uh, uh, talk about um training and nutrition because we just love our jobs we do yeah. we're definitely gonna have frida back um <laughs> Uh, in a couple weeks mm -hmm. uh, because there's so there is so much material here and there's so much uh, to be covered so don't worry we mm -hmm. will absolutely <laughs> be back for another episode soon everything hurts and I'm dying <laughs> all right everybody so we're just gonna have some of our closing remarks now um, in summary thinking about everything that we've talked about today with Rita uh, one thing that came to my mind was looking at uh, nutrition being sort of relative to the individual. So trying to find ways of having your healthiest diet be sort of suitable for you as an individual. And it's not necessarily a one size fits all mm. plan. So stop trying to find a one size fits all <laughs> plan because you ain't going to find it. And you're going to be way more successful if you start to think about what works best for you. Mm. What do you think about that, Rita? Absolutely. I, um, I, this is, um, I think the most empowering thing that anyone can understand. So if this is the only thing that you take away from um, our discussion today is that you have total control over your choices and those choices can be whatever works best for you. And they you don't have to commit to them, like you are allowed to change your mind and you can just do what's best for you um, in any certain uh, situation because that will get you the best results you don't want to create a whole new uh, diet or just live your life around your diet you want to fit that diet into your life mm -hmm. you have we are all busy and I'm sure uh, this is a big ex excuse for most people that oh I'm too busy I don't know um, how to do it but we eat every day several times a day so if we just marginally improve our choices every single day or in some of our meals and increase our activities and just make sure that we are um, trying to do anything little that we can to get closer to where we want to be that will have results in um, uh, over a certain period of time however long it takes depends on how big those changes are that you implement yeah so little steps can add up to big changes mm -hmm. Alrighty, so Rita, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks I'm so happy me. that you came. Uh, it was really fun. Um, <laughs> if you guys want to get a hold of Rita or if you have any follow-up questions for her, feel free to follow her on Instagram. Her Instagram is prioritize underscore you. Um, again, that's prioritize underscore you. And that's how to get a hold of her on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You can always get a hold of me at trextraining20. And that's my Instagram handle. You can also get a hold of us at question or questions at ehaid.com or hit up everythinghurtsandimdying.com <laughs> or everythinghurtsandimdying.co.uk. Thanks so much. And thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for having me, Julia. Loved and it's been you. lovely to be here. <laughs> Hopefully we will have you guys all back next week. See ya.